You know, there's there's a lot of people probably here today that are losing their jobs in the next or last week or this week or already a month ago. And yeah, it's it's an awful thing. I came for freedom and freedom of choice, but just freedom as individuals as well. You know, the, this is for the policemen, the firefighters, the doctors and nurses right here in Bonneville and Cold Lake, St. Paul, losing their jobs. And that's that's why we're here. Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. Sheila Gunn Reed for Rebel News, and it's Saturday morning. It just stopped raining, and I hope the weather holds out. I'm here in beautiful downtown Bonneville, Alberta, about three hours northeast of the capital city of Edmonton. And I'm here because there's a demonstration taking place right behind me against the medical discrimination being imposed on Albertans through the vaccine passport and workplace vaccine mandates. Bonneville's an oil patch town and those workplace vaccine mandates are in the oil patch already. Now, when the carbon tax was being imposed on Alberta, it was small town Alberta that rallied week after week against it. When there were convoys being held in favor of the oil patch, they were happening in small towns when Bill 6, the NDP law that put bankers hours on family farms, was threatened upon us. It was small town Alberta that stepped up week after week. And I know a little something about what goes on in small towns, being a bit of a small town girl myself. It's always been my experience that small towns are the least accepting of the government's bad ideas, like recently treating our friends and neighbours like they're lepers. The neighbours and family that we have are the ones that we rely on in small town Alberta every single day. It makes small town life possible. There's about a crowd of two to three hundred here already. They're starting to walk down to the provincial building where they're going to link arms in a show of solidarity, the vaccinated and the unvaccinated alike. And then they're going to stand there for five minutes and then they're going to walk back. I'm going to go with them. I'm going to talk to the people instead of, you know, talk about the people the way the mainstream media does all the time. Let's go check it out and find out the other side of the story. Okay, you're here with your kids at the protest. Why? We really just want to see the government overreach stop. Uh, this isn't about vaccines or masks. It's about people having a choice. And, you know, the, this is for the policemen, the firefighters, the doctors and nurses right here in Bonneville and Cold Lake, St. Paul, losing their jobs. And that's, that's why we're here. I came for freedom and freedom of choice, but just freedom as individuals as well. We... Um, in a society that's taking that freedom away, uh, at some point we need to all stand up. Well, I lost my job because of COVID. Well, I actually had to withdraw from university because my religious exemption was not accepted. And so I just think, like, when religious rights aren't being respected, there's definitely something wrong going on. Freedom, liberty, family, integrity. And I'm here on my own accord as much, just as a personal citizen in the area, standing up for those freedoms. Well, we came here for our children's future. And, of course, ultimately, that's everyone's future. You know, there's there's a lot of people probably here today that are losing their jobs in the next, or last week or this week, or already a month ago. And Yeah, and it's, it's an awful thing. How's that? <laughs> Daddy! Well, the march is over, the parking lot cleared out, the field is empty, people have gone home to go about their lives. I looked hard. I looked really, really hard, and I did not find any of those dangerous anti-vaxxer conspiracy theorists, the media, and the politicians, and the fancy people tell me attend these sorts of things. No, instead I found just a bunch of severely normal people who resist medical coercion, and they're against segregating people in their workplace, people from their families, people from their children. If an unvaccinated dad wants to watch his eight-year-old play hockey. Now, if you're one of those people that resists the medical segregation like I do, might I suggest you head on over to our special website. It's fightvaccinepassports.com. At that website, you can support our legal efforts to take 20 strategic lawsuits in jurisdictions all across the country in an effort to overturn the vaccine passport and workplace vaccine 
mandate. So we're doing this all in partnership with the Democracy Fund, and that means all of your donations there qualify for a charitable tax receipt through the registered Canadian charity, the Democracy Fund. Now, I should correct myself. Because at the beginning of this video, I suggested that there were 200 to 300 people here. But I think it was closer to four to 500 people just based on how long it took people to go past me. And I also want to say that I did bring with me a poppy. I was wearing a poppy at the beginning of this video, but at some point it blew away. And I stopped not once, not twice, but three times along the march to get a new poppy uh, once just up the road here, some little Boy Scouts were selling them. They were super cute, so I bought one there. By the time I got back to the field, my poppy had blown away, but a nice marcher was kind enough to give me one. It was a great day today. The weather held up, and for that, I am glad. But it is chilly, and I'm happy to jump back in my Jeep and head on to the next story. Here in Bonneville, Alberta, for Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. If you are against medical segregation, might I suggest you head on over to our very special website at fightvaccinepassports.com. There on that website, you can support our efforts to bring forward 20 strategic lawsuits in jurisdictions all across the country to overturn vaccine passports and fight vaccine mandates in workplaces. And through our partnership with the Democracy Fund,